here we go, June 26th. Vision without action is a daydream. Action without vision is a nightmare. Japanese proverb. So we've been pretty good in this text at focusing on our misgivings and the steps we need to take to move forward. Just for the guilty pleasure of it, if only for a paragraph, let's pick on those around us in meetings. We have all heard people in meetings say, when I do my step four, then, they said the same thing 12 weeks earlier in the last step four meeting we were in. Some people might recover by osmosis, by simply putting their asses in chairs, or what we might call asmosis. Staying clean and sober is good enough for many, but the benefits of the 12 steps can only be realized by doing them. The nightmare for us of action without vision can come in the form of a member who seems to speak just to hear his or her own voice. They have no point. They simply put their lips into action. Hearing others theorize about the steps devoid of firsthand experience is a nightmare for the rest of us. Okay, so how did that feel? What's more exhilarating than talking about the shortcomings of others? Getting back to introspection, we see that we may be throwing stones at others while we live in glass houses ourselves. Have we not talked big in meetings and then not followed through? Have we shared at meetings or done service work just looking for kudos? We are responsible for our own recovery. If we have an issue with any of the 12 steps, we struggle through or replace these exercises with something more authentic. The steps are only suggestions. There has never been one right way to do them. The reflection in the mirror can tell us if our vision is pure and if our actions are integral. So today, am I going through the motions or am I working with the vision? What project that I have been talking about doing will I roll up my sleeves and get to work on today? I, I don't really put a whole lot of emphasis on doing my recovery exactly to a certain way. So for me, recovery is taking it one day at a time and doing the very best I can. And at that, with that, m making goals for myself, like doing this is a goal for myself because it makes me step out of my comfort zone and be able to share. I don't want to end up wasting all the time that I had in the organization and not really help someone. So, and I realize you can't help any everybody. You can't help anybody that doesn't want to get helped, right? So when I see a small group of individuals that listen, I figure we all realize that we have to be here for one reason or another. And our goal is that we get better, right? That we, we conquer fears that we had been laden with. We conquer sadnesses that we had. But of course, our thoughts limit us. We're the only things that limit us. No one else limits us. And to let go of our core beliefs which have been inside of us for so long. I mean, they were, I probably was in the womb when my mom was um, studying with me. I know I did with my children. I did Bible reading and I thought that was something that was important for my girls, right? 
and now I realize, okay, now, no. Um, now trying to redo everything that I did, but still have a very open mind about it. I don't feel like I was ever traditional in any sense. So I, I kind of stepped, I always did things by my own beat, even as a Jehovah's Witness. So I think with my children, we still do things differently. I homeschool. So that right there tells you that I kind of think a lot, a lot differently from the norm. You may not agree and that's fine. I like working on myself. I like knowing that I've accomplished something and that I'm trying to do better. That makes and, Yeah, it's very easy to criticize um, other people for not doing certain things, right? For me too, um, getting healthy, my mind healthy is really important to me. I, I want to be a help, but the only way that I can be helpful is if I'm doing all, making those inroads myself. I could go back in time and like really get all my, all my knowledge, but unfortunately that's not how it works. So yeah, pain lip service, putting our lips into action. Uh, and I think I like the point where it says devoid of firsthand experience is a nightmare for the rest of us. So I think my experiences that I've had with being a Jehovah's witness and being in that thought process for so long, I don't want to waste that. I don't want to waste that on just not expressing myself and explaining it to someone else who may be in pain. So I don't know what you're going through. I, but I just didn't know, I didn't think it would be wise for me to just not say anything about my experiences because I, that's the whole point. Even as Jehovah's Witnesses, as a Jehovah's Witness, that whole point was that I would help somebody. Of course, you, you have to be wanting the help, right? Like it said, lip service. Do you put your lips into action? And that is on an individual, that's on, on the individual, right? And with the, a 12 step program, that is just based on you. That's not based on anyone else. And when you do better, when you know better, you do better, right? You know better, you do better. And for me, that's, that's the point of Al-Anon because of bad habits were instilled in us from the time we were born. We didn't really have a chance as Jehovah's Witnesses. We were not given opportunities that other individuals were given. If you were in a cult, you weren't given the opportunities. They were actually taken away from you and your choices were made by others. So now I have a voice. Now I have my choices. And you have yours. And whatever core beliefs that we had, we make new ones. We want differently. We want to do things better. We want to make better decisions. We want our children not to suffer. We want better for ourselves. And we're gonna do everything we can to get that. And that's where I am. I want better for others as well. To suffer in the pit isn't fun by yourself. But when you have someone who's already experienced the pit of pain, it makes it a lot easier to know, hey, that person survived. I can too. And a, it, it's not easy to have a positive attitude and you're not gonna have it every day. I, I hate that sometimes it's that over positive attitude. It's, it's hard. It's not gonna, it's a struggle. It's a struggle for me every day because my range is in the negative right away. I, I My mind will go down to the negative. It takes a force to get it back up to even just to the middle midpoint. So you're not alone in that. 
And I think that's where uh, Mel Robbins comes in. And she says, five, four, three, two, one. And give yourself a high five in the mirror because you need your own reflection to help you get through those difficult times. I, I like that, five, four, three, two, one. And when you count backwards, it helps with your brains and how it works and so that you can think positively and, and get your patootie booty back into a groove where you're in a more positive frame of mind and just to get something done right away or get something done get a goal and get it done and that's how my life is now I try and set the goals and then try and get them done and it can be baby steps I don't necessarily get what I want done in a day sometimes it takes three days to get one thing done properly and we're older I'm older so computers is new you know, certain things about a computer can be really challenging and oh, I get tired my body kind of just does what it wants and then I have to try and figure out okay well what can I get that what can I get done my daughter was really um, encouraging she said mom just get three things write down three things and over though in those three things that you write down pick the one that is the most important to you and she was right right three things sometimes it's just three things that we can get done our kids are really smart I love my kids they in a lot of ways they're smarter than I was and I that I am so I really appreciate their input and I thank them for it because I need it they see things with fresh eyes. So you know, look at your kids as valuable resources to help you, to helping you and, and challenging you and directing you in a different way, making you do things differently. You know, I enjoy that. I enjoy their input. I try and get it as often as I can so that I can improve. I mean, they live with me for heaven's sakes. People that you love, you can hurt, and you don't even know you're doing it, or you don't realize that you can do something differently. I love, I love YouTube for that, because we can always find ways to just think out of the box, and it's all over the world. It's not just in one, you know, in one area of the world. You're you're getting to see how people see things and how they redirect themselves when they come to something that's challenging for them. I really appreciate that. So do your steps, do the best you can. Don't expect perfection and don't compare yourself. We're all in a different journey. We're all on a different path and our core beliefs can be, can be changed no matter how old we are, right? Alrighty, well, I hope this helps you on your healing journey. I looked at my footage for my, it was United for Our Rights weekend. It was so much fun, but I don't think I have enough footage to compile for just a few, you know, for um, even just a few minutes. I'm gonna double check. But if not, then I'm popping it right on here um, at the end. I hope you have a good evening. I hope you've had a good day. May your life be filled with love and abundance. <sighs> Yay, we did it. Big hug. Mm -hmm. Follow your bliss and be good humans. So I would stand over there where the Starbucks is in the mornings for my service. It's so funny because I'm like on the same street that I've got field service. That's pretty funny. That's ironic, don't you think? <laughs> we're tired. We would stay longer, but we're older and it's time to go home. All you wonderful
wonderful pansexuals, queer folk, LGBTQ plus, everybody. So grateful. It was nice. It was fun and it was safe. And nobody tried trying to change us. And we were not trying to change them.